Hey there, folks. My name is Kern. Today we are going to look at the Wrath Classic talent calculator for paladins, particularly, of course, holy paladins. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a good build for you to level from 70 to 80. Um, assuming, of course, you are doing uh, dungeon runs to level with uh, your guildies or um, decent pugs, hopefully decent pugs, uh, and um, then we'll look at a couple of different uh, level 80 builds. So, uh, of course, I am using the Wowhead Wrath of the Lich King Classic Talent Calculator here. Um, so, first thing to note is that we will not have 71 points to start with. We will only have 61 points because you will only be level 70 at the start of Wrath. So, First things first, let's dive into the Holy Tree. Um, what's really interesting is uh, in the first couple tiers of each tree, um, you'll have talents that are interesting for the other trees. So if you're Prot or Ret, like you might like Seals of the Pure, um, but like if you're Holy, you might like Divinity uh, and Benediction. Um, so like these are different things in the first couple tiers that are useful for all specs. So let's bear that in mind. Uh, so here we have uh, Seals of the Pure, which is not remotely useful for us as Holy Paladins, but we do have Spiritual Focus. It reduces the pushback suffered from damaging attacks while casting Flash of Light and Holy Light by 14, 28, 42, 56, and 70 percent. So let's top that off right away. Five points right there. Um, what's interesting is that Concentration Aura is 35% pushback reduction. So once you have 5 of 5 Spiritual Focus and you put on Concentration Aura, you cannot suffer pushback while casting Flash of Light and Holy Light, period. You can be interrupted, you can be stunned, all of that stuff. You can be Curse of Tongued, but you cannot suffer pushback, which delays the, cast of, the casting of your spell. So pick up 5 of 5 Spiritual Focus. Second tier, uh, we have Healing Light, which increases the amount healed by your Holy Light, Flash of Light, and the effectiveness of Holy Shock spells by 4, 8, 12%. Yes, please take all of that. Divine Intellect increases your total intellect by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10%. Of course, we want that as well. Do we want Unyielding Faith? No. This is one of those PvP-ish talents or talents that are helpful for other trees. This is not something that we need for PvE content. Uh, unless it's a really gimmicky fight. Then we come into a tier that is very holy based. Um, so there's Aura Mastery and we'll come back to that. Uh, but there is Illumination. I know, I know, it's painful that Illumination is a 100% chance to get 30% mana back after Classic and Burning Crusade Classic. It's so painful to see that drop from 100% mana uh, back to 30%, but 30% is better than nothing, so take it. Um, not so sure about Improved Lay on Hands, we'll come back to that as well. Um, but we don't need Improved Concentration Aura. Uh, we, we really don't, because when we have base Concentration Aura plus Virtual Focus, we have no need for this. Uh, this is something that might be uh, useful in PvP, for example. Um, I like here to go with Improved Blessing of Wisdom. Um, paladins in general have uh, less threat generated by our heal spells than any other healing class. Not entirely sure why that is. Uh, I, I think I used to know, but I don't remember at this point. It's been a long time. Uh, so um, rather than give ourselves salve, you might want to give a priest salve, you know, but um, rather than give ourselves salve, Give us wisdom, or kings potentially. So we're going to go with improved blessing of wisdom. This gets us down to the next tier. Do we need pure of heart? Eh, no, not really. This is, again, the PvP talent, especially because it focuses on the reducing the duration of curses, diseases, and poisons. Uh, so we won't take that. And uh, we will, of course, take divine favor. That's sick in the face. That is a guaranteed crit on Flash of Light, Holy Light, or Holy Shock. So we'll pick that up, and we'll come back to that in a bit. Obviously, we also want Sanctified Light because it increases the critical effect chance of your Holy Light and Holy Shock spells by 2, 4, 6%. Yes, please. 
All right, so we now need at least, yeah, we need one more point to get down to this tier. So um, you could go Aura Mastery, uh, which causes your concentration aura to make all affected targets immune to silence and interrupt effects. Eh. And improves the effect of all other auras by 100%. Last six seconds. It's that second one that we really like um, when you're dealing with frost damage, fire damage, um, what other damage? <laughs> There's other damage. Uh, but uh, you definitely want to ensure that you pick this up as a raid cooldown. Um, you could also go with Improved Lay on Hands. For this example, um, let's go with Improved Lay on Hands. Uh, just because in dungeons, you're not generally going to use Aura Mastery all that often. So we'll just go with Improved Lay on Hands 1 of 2 for now. Then, down here, you don't need purifying power. Um, I've used this before, but really, it was like the yogg Saron fight. And that was only because it reduced the mana cost of my cleanse uh, spell. It was useful because there's so much de like cleansing to do on that fight. Um, but otherwise, again, it's a PvP spell. Uh, so, Holy Power increases the critical effect chance of your holy spells as all your holy spells. It's not just, you know, holy shock. It is all your holy spells. That includes exorcism. So let's just go boom, boom, boom. 5% extra crit chance on all your holy spells. Then, of course, we pick up holy shock because, I mean, you need holy shock. Holy shock is actually pretty great. Um, in the older versions of WoW, it had a 15 second cooldown, which was terrible. This is what makes us a little bit more mobile. Um, don't get me wrong, we are still like designed to sort of stand there and just cast an insane amount of heals, um, but we, Holy Shock will allow us to be slightly more mobile. So let's pick that up. Um, what's interesting, too, is that you can, uh, as sort of like an oh crap button, you can hit Divine Favor, and then on the move, hit Holy Shock, and then when you get to your place, uh, resume casting. Um, so that's really helpful. Uh, Light's Grace gives your Holy Light spell a 3366 100% chance to reduce the cast time of your next Holy Light spell by 0.5 seconds. This effect lasts 15 seconds. We're going to pick up all three points there because your base cast time for Holy Light is 2.5 seconds. That is an eternity. Holy cow. So this right away after you cast your first Holy Light, basically throughout an entire fight, you will never, almost never, um, have a holy light that costs ca uh, that takes more than two seconds to cast. Pick this up; it is heavenly. Then we have blessed life. All attacks against you have a four percent, etc., chance to cause half damage. Again, PvP. So we're gonna go up and we're gonna pick up that second improved lay on hands point. So this now grants the target of your lay on hands spell. 20% reduced physical damage taken for 15 seconds. Great tank cooldown. In addition, the cooldown for your Lay on Hand spell is reduced by 4 minutes. So we're starting out at 20 minutes. We're reducing it by 4 minutes. Now we're at 16 minutes. There's a Glyph, which reduces it by an additional 5 minutes. So you are now looking at an 11-minute cooldown on Lay on Hands. Pretty awesome. All right. Do we want Sacred Cleansing? No. We don't. Again, PvP-based, uh, gimmicky fight-based. Again, I've used this on Yogg-Saron. It was useful. Don't really see another need for it elsewhere. But this Holy Guidance increases your spell power by 4, 8, 12, 16, 20% of your total intellect. Yes, please. Then down here we have Divine Illumination. Why not? Instant cast, 3-minute cooldown, uh, this is a great ability that reduces the mana cost of all your spells by 50% for 15 seconds. This is glorious. When you are on Heroic Sour Fang and you're on Mark 1 and 3 or 2 and 4 and you are empty, like there is nothing left in the tank, hit this baby and that will hopefully help you to the end of the fight. Um, wow, it's, it's come in clutch for me so many times. I cannot imagine healing without divine illumination. What else do we have here? Oh yes, Judgments of the Pure. 
increases the damage done by your seal and judgment spells by 5%, whatever. But your judgment spells increase your casting and melee haste by 3, 6, 9, 12, 15% for one minute. So you are now casting, thanks to judgments, um, I'm sorry, thanks to Light's Grace. You have a two second holy light in most cases. And then this increases your casting time. Your holy light spell is now, without any other haste on your gear, 1.7 seconds. Sick in the face, right? So we want to get this. We also want to judge once a minute at minimum. You should ideally be judging more frequently to get up um, judgment of light or judgment of mana, wisdom, judgment of wisdom. Uh, but sometimes you can only eke it out once per minute, but it's key to do that. You want to have 95% plus uptime on judgments of the pure. If not, you're doing it wrong. Sorry, that's all there is to it. I've done it wrong in the past. Anyway, <laughs> it's very, very important to get judgments of the pure and then to judge. But Kern, you might say, I don't like standing in the middle of melee. I don't like the 10 yard range or whatever it is on judgments. I like to stand way the hell in the back with the hunters and the mages and the warlocks. No problem. That's where enlightened judgments comes in. It increases the range of your judgment of light and judgment of wisdom spells by 15 and 30 yards and also increases your chance to hit by 4%. Excellent. Pick that up. It'll make sure that you almost never miss with your judgment and you can stay way the hell in the back with the casters. I would be remiss, of course, if I did not say to pick up Infusion of Light. Infusion of Light is amazing. Look at this. Your Holy Shock critical hits reduce the cast time of your next flash of light by 1.5 seconds or increase the critical chance of your next Holy Light by 20%. In addition, causes your flash of light to heal targets with Sacred Shield for an additional 100% over 12 seconds. There's a lot to unpack there. But if you have any doubt whatsoever, pick this up if only for the fact that it reduces your next flash of light from 1.5 seconds to instant cast. So let's look at this. Use Divine Favor, which will force a crit on your next flash of light, Holy Light or Holy Shock. Use Holy Shock. And now your next flash of light is instant cast. So if you have to move a lot and your tank is going to die, hit Divine Favor, start moving, hit them with Holy Shock. Once your global comes back up, hit them with that flash of light. Hopefully by the, that point, you can stop moving and start casting in earnest. If they're not in super amounts of danger and you don't need to spend that instant flash of light, toss them a Holy Light because that has an increased 20% critical chance sick in the face. This is some really nice um, uh, complimentary spell work, in my opinion. And then, of course, we have Beacon of Light. Beacon of Light at 100% heal transfer. Sick in the face. Pick it up. Enjoy it while it lasts. Again, it uh, only lasts one minute, so it's one of those things you'll want to keep up along with judgments, your beacon, possibly your sacred shield, all sorts of things need to keep rolling and you need to be on top of it. All right, so that brings us to level 60. We now have 10 points to spend. Um, where are we going to spend them? We're going to spend them in divinity. 5% uh, of an increase in all healing done by you and all healing effects on you by 5%. And then we're also going to go with benediction because it reduces the mana cost of all instant cast spells by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10%. You're like, Kern, the only instant cast spell I have is Holy Shock. Wrong. You have blessings. You have judgments. You have sacred shield. You have consecration. You have, um, gosh, uh, sac did I mention sacred shield? Beacon. Uh, you have all kinds of spells that are instant cast. This comes in super handy. No joke. So this is what I would recommend for someone leveling who's going from level 70 to level 80. Start out here. This is a great base. All right, let's look at some level 80 builds. There are some people who, and I am not one of them, but that doesn't mean it's wrong, 
who really want to get conviction in the rep tree. This increases your chance to get a critical strike with all spells and attacks by an additional 5%. This is not a bad thing. This is actually quite good, um, especially if you are uh, doing things in lower, not lower level content, but content uh, with fewer people. So you have fewer people healing the tank. You might just want to deal with the overheal and get as many crits out as possible. So for that, I would definitely recommend going with Benediction and probably unless you're running with a reliable warrior um, to get improved Blessing of Might, then you have a choice here. You can go improve Judgments, eh, reduces the cooldown of Judgment by one or two seconds. I like this, Heart of the Crusader. This is a very nice raid debuff. Because in addition to the normal effect, your judgment spells will also increase the critical strike chance of all attacks made against that target by an additional one, two, three percent. That's sick. Do that. Be be useful to your group and pick up part of the Crusader if you're going to go deep into the red tree. And then that's when you can pick up your five points in conviction. That's a pretty reasonable uh, sort of tree uh i i would want to pick up aura mastery maybe you want to go like four or five conviction and pick up aura mastery um but that's really up to you uh see what works best with your play style uh let's look at a deep prod build so we can remove this and this and this okay so we have 10 points to play with and we probably won't want to put most of them into prod so we've already got five points here. We really want to get Divine Sacrifice and if possible, Divine Guardian. We can definitely get Divine Sacrifice, no problem. It, it's much more difficult to get Divine Guardian, but that's such a nice raid cooldown. So there are some weird builds that will include this. So the first thing I would get here in the second tier is Guardian's Favor because it reduces the cooldown of your hand of protection by two minutes instead of five. So like, you can cast it every three minutes instead of every five minutes. It increases the duration of your hand of freedom, blah, blah, blah. Do we want stoicism? Meh. No, that's like a PvP talent. Let's pick up anticipation. Why? Because that is 1% avoidance per talent point you use. We need to use five in this tier. Well, a total of 10 in these first two tiers to get down to divine, um, to divine, sacrifice. But this is actual pure avoidance. So while we're not the squishiest of people, um, it's nice to not, um, it's, it's nice to have the mobs work a little harder to hit you. Um, it's not always going to be that useful, but we need to get down to that third tier. So pick that up because there's no better way to do so. Um, you don't need more strength. You don't need stoicism. Pick up three of five anticipation just to get down to this tier. Once you're here, pick up Divine Sacrifice. 30% of all damage taken by party members within 30 yards is redirected to the Paladin, up to a maximum of 40% of the Paladin's health times the number of party members. Damage which reduces the Paladin below 20% health will break the effect last 10 seconds. Basically, bubble, then Divine Sacrifice. Pretty sweet. Then... We have four points left. Let's grab Aura Mastery. And then what do we do with the other three? Well, we could go with Improved Blessing of Might. Could go with Heart of the Crusader. I like to go with Improved Righteous Fury. You know, like, Kern, what are you doing? You're not a tank. True. But look at that. When Righteous Fury is active, all damage taken is reduced, reduced by two, four, six percent. That's not bad. When you have a persistent aura and only one uh, mob, like one big boss, that's pretty great because you are automatically reducing your damage taken by 6% every time that pulses, you know? And if there are no mobs to worry about because your tank isn't awful um, and, and there aren't any ads, why not? That's just a sort of a no-brainer for me to reduce damage taken. Does it feel weird to have improved Righteous Fury on? Yes. Yes, it does. Do you sometimes have to time things very carefully? Yes. Yes, you do. 
but it's it's really useful in certain situations. Um, and of course, like we start out with less threat on our heels than other classes. So this only puts us a little bit above other classes in terms of threat. So this is not a bad way to get Divine Sacrifice and hang out with uh, some reduced damage taken here. That said, I like Divine Guardian. I really like Divine Guardian. So what I would do in order to get it is, unfortunately, I would take from Benediction and I would put another point into Anticipation. I would take another point from Benediction and put it into the first part of Divine Guardian. And then I could I could potentially take it from Enlightened Judgments, although I still like to stand away the hell back. Or I could take another point from Benediction and put it into Divine Guardian. But listen to this. When Divine Sacrifice is activated, your party and raid members within 30 yards take 20% reduced damage for 6 seconds. In addition, increases the duration of your Sacred Shield by 100%, blah, 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 blah. So, honestly, you hit Divine Shield and Divine Sacrifice, then your entire group gets 20% reduced damage for 6 seconds. It's a great raid cooldown. Um, I've used it on Heroic Putricide when you're in, I guess it's Phase 3, and you're kiting um, Putricide around the room. Wow. Like, usually, usually at the end of the fight, it was like the paladins and the tanks who were still alive. <laughs> but it was mostly because of Divine Sacrifice. Like, we did a lot to make sure our tanks lived. Now, that's maybe not the best standard build. That's sort of a kind of a... You know, if you've got a tricky thing going on, like Putricide, um, then you want Divine Guardian. You don't always need it. It's nice. And Divine Sacrifice is mostly um, going to help you out there. But uh, let's put our points back into Benediction, back into Enlightened Judgments. And let's look a little more thoroughly at the Holy Tree. I like Blessed Hands. It reduces mana cost and effectiveness of things like Hand of Salvation, but Hand of Sacrifice. I'm going to take two points out of Improved Righteous Fury and top out Blessed Hands because it's it gives, excuse me, it gives Hand of Sacrifice an additional 10% effectiveness. Let's do that. The, this is this is more or less my standard build when it comes to level 80 content, unless there's something gimmicky going on. So you've got Spiritual Focus, Healing Light, Divine Intellect, Aura Mastery, Illumination, Improved Blessing of Wisdom, uh, Blessed Hands, Divine Favor, Sanctified Light, Holy Power, Light's Grace, Holy Shock, Holy Guidance, Divine Illumination, Judgments of the Pure, Infusion of Light, Enlightened Judgments, Beacon of Light, with Divinity, Guardian's Favor, 3 of 5 Anticipation, just to get down here, where I put 1 point to Divine Sacrifice, 1 point to Improved Righteous Fury, and then 5 points for Benediction. So, that's my standard uh, build. What about you? What is your standard build? Uh, please feel free to link your builds here in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for more Wrath of the Lich King Classic Holy Paladin content.